Hello, today I want to talk about this. It's called a hot air reflow station. It's a little box and it's got this torch thing on the side here. This has actually got a little fan in the base of it. I'll just show you what that looks. See, there's a, there's a fan in there, a little blower in that bit, which directs air down the length of this tube and it pops out the end here. You can see it's got a little hole for the air to come out. Now, it's not just cold air that comes out there, it's hot air. It actually creates, it's a bit like a hot air gun, you know, a heat gun. But it's much smaller and it's also more accurately controlled because over here we have a display. I should turn this on. Currently it's sleeping. See that? It's sleeping. And on there we can adjust the temperature with up and down buttons and we can adjust the amount of air that flows through this little rotary knob. So we can create a, a stream of hot air that can be hundreds of degrees Celsius in temperature. And why would you want that? Uh, well, the reason is you might want to repair a board like this. Now, this is a board out of a Turnigy 9X or a Flysky 9X transmitter. And a lot of the components on here are little tiny little surface mount components, which it's really hard to so unsolder with a standard soldering iron because the problem is you've got to heat both ends at once. And you can't do that with a single soldering iron. So if you use a, blow, a blast of hot air, you can heat up the whole thing. It makes it much easier to take bits off and put bits on because today I'm repairing this radio. This radio here which unfortunately the owner has um, connected the battery up backwards and when you do that it blows up a couple of rather important little pieces on these radios. Hang on a minute, I'll just get a little bit more a better angle on here. Hopefully this will focus. Normally when you blow them up this little voltage regulator goes poof and sometimes these little capacitors also get damaged. That's usually the only real thing that goes wrong. Sometimes the, the copper traces get a bit burnt, but what we'll do is we'll open up this radio, we'll have a look inside, and we'll see if we can fix it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this little regulator here off the board using the hot air reflow gun. So we've got to get enough heat onto that component to melt the solder. Now this is horrible, happy lead-free solder, so it takes a bit of heat. And, and it's just a case of Getting, holding your mouth right, getting enough temperature in there that the solder itself will melt without totally destroying the component. And once it does melt, you're able to simply lift the component free. I see some of the solder melting, but not the bit I'm looking for. One of the problems, here we go. So now we have pulled that component off the board. You see how nice and easy that was? Didn't have to mess around trying to dick around with the soldering iron. And what I might also do is remove this tantalum capacitor here because this also is one of the bits that will almost certainly have been damaged by reversing the polarity. So let's just give that a go. Heat up both ends. Get enough heat into this thing. Back in the good old days, we were taught never to uh, overheat our components. But now, these bits are designed to cope with this level of temperature, so you don't really damage them when you pull them off like that. So there we go, those are the two bits that I will be changing initially. And I've taken them off this board because this is a spare board, board full of spare parts that I, I use for repairing other things. So I've taken the bits off, nice and easy, simple, quick, efficient. And now I will go open up the back of that transmitter and we'll replace the bits that are in that transmitter with these good bits. So let's take the back off this radio. Fairly simple task. Of course, if you, most people won't have a spare Turnigy 9X circuit board from which they can rob parts. So they'll just have to go out and buy the bits that we're talking about. And I'll put um, some links perhaps in the description of this video to sources where you can pick up those bits if you really, really need them. Let's see if it's going to come apart. There's always one or two screws that are a bit reluctant with these things. There we go, there we go, now, um, of course this doesn't have a battery in it, but if it did have a battery in it, you would always disconnect that battery, although if you've, obviously if you oh it does have a battery in it, look at that, but it's not plugged in. So, um, yeah, you would obviously disconnect the battery, which I've done before you pull it apart, just in case. And this radio, of course, has been modified, it's had the ER9X software flashed into it, i just tip it over and get rid of these screws before I lose them all, because they'll roll everywhere otherwise. Here we go, they're all out. And now I can unplug this lead to the main circuit board, like so, and then the back is 
pretty much completely free if I pull this cable through. There we go. Get rid of the back. It only gets in the way. Get rid of the battery, get rid of the case. There we go. So now what we've got to do is on this board, we have to locate the same components. There they are, see? Now these ones haven't gone, the smoke hasn't come out of these. You can't see, it's obviously not caught on fire. Sometimes if you plug them in backwards, they will get a bit hot and that can cause some issues with overheating. So, you know, if the components look black and charred, then it's pretty easy to identify them. But otherwise, if it all just seems totally dead, then chances are it's this little regulator here and that little tantalum there, or maybe even that one. So what we'll do is we'll replace these two and see what happens. Again, need to turn on our hot air gun. Let it get up to speed. And the big thing, of course, is to make sure you don't actually melt the solder and remove any other bits that you really want to keep. So here we go. much coffee today Bruce. Get the solder soft. This lead free stuff is rubbish I've got to say because it doesn't doesn't actually show it doesn't actually sort of melt suddenly it's more it's not hyper eutectic it's it's just goes soft and you don't know when it's actually soft enough to pull a bit off. Got to be careful not to melt the plastic bits as well, because there are plastic bits in here. Like those little contain connectors for the, there we go. The little connectors for the plugs. You've got to make sure you don't get too much heat on there, otherwise you're really in trouble. So now what we've got is the place where the bit goes. And of course I will remove that tantalum as well while we're here. Making sure you observe the polarity, because these things are polarity conscious. So the positive end goes towards the this end this side of the radio we are yeah positive ends this end not that end this end but remember that right so let's pull that tantalum try and shift it around a bit. get a better angle for my hot air gun hot glue on this gets a bit warm starting to melt Oops, there we go. So those are the ones that could be bad. And we can actually give that just a little bit of these other bits in there. You've got to be careful. I've just moved a tiny little capacitor, a little resistor there, which I'll have to put back in place. There we go. Let's refloat him back in place. You can always touch him up with a soldering iron if you need to later. So now let's put the replacement parts. And now you can use a soldering iron for putting the replacement parts in. You don't actually have to use a hot air gun but reflowing it's just a simple way to do it so you put the part on this time when you reflow it it should actually settle down onto the solder it's probably a good idea to actually refresh the solder on these if you're going to reflow them let that cool I might put a bit of extra solder on those pads later if they need it. Let's take a good look, make sure I've got everything close and then put that spare regulator on there. So I'm going to use my crusty old soldering iron, it's really not a good one, it's not the best one for this job, but my other iron isn't here at the moment, my nice little Hako or Heiko iron isn't here right now so I'm going to use this one. The problem with these irons is sometimes they get a bit too hot, but if you're really quick and you know what you're doing, the extra heat or the extra temperature isn't an issue. However, if you're not good at soldering, you really need to uh, perhaps get someone else to do this job for you because it is quite small and fiddly, these little bits. They're a little bit of a fiddly job to solder them on, so we'll have a go, see how we get on here. As you can see, it's, they always want to move, and when you've had too much coffee like me, stopping the moving is a bit of an issue. This actually needs a bit of solder on it. Right. 
what I'll do is I'll put a bit of extra solder on the top there because we'll use some good old lead. Use a bit of good old lead here just to, uh, oh, I've lost the plot on my camera here. Uh, use a bit of good old leaded solder, which is actually much better, flows more easily. Oh, shiny, lovely, beautiful. So I'm gonna, just going to retin the, the individual circuit lands there just to make sure that's beautiful. And then I can get my tweezers and pop my replacement part on there. Bring this all around into shot, hopefully. There we go. And I'll just solder up one end. Trying not to melt the plastic connector. Got a bit of heat on there, but that doesn't matter. Okay. Not exactly the way I wanted it, so just fiddle around, just reposition it a bit. That's better. Now I can solder up those individual legs. That looks pretty damn good to me. As I say, the problem with this horrible hippie solder is it doesn't really reflow nicely once you've used it and the flux has gone out of it. But hopefully that seems to have done the job. Now at this stage, one would hope the radio was repaired. Of course, this other regulator over here might have gone also. So what we'll do is let us cool down because it's pretty hot. We've just melted solder, so <laughs> let it cool down. We'll plug things in. Okay, so we're uh, ready to try this out. Now I've plugged the, well, let's plug the lead back in. This little lead here that brings power from the back of the transmitter to the circuit board. Get that all plugged in and lined up. There we go. Hard to, oops, bit hard to do while I'm fiddling around here. All right, that's all plugged in and Let's make sure the radio is turned off, plug in the transmitter battery that I have here and see what happens. It's plugged in, let's put this over here so we're not going to short anything out. Let's turn it on, see if the magic works. Woohoo, look at that, it works again. Brilliant. So there we go. We have fixed the radio just by changing those two little components after the battery was plugged in backwards. That's how simple it can be sometimes. But it does help to have the right tools, which is why we've got the hot air reflow station. I'll put this radio back together and make sure it works properly. So there you go. A radio that was broken, didn't work at all, is now perfectly fine. Now this, I noticed, did have the uh, LED backlighting in there and it doesn't work anymore because it's a separate little heat shrunk board and no doubt that will have been damaged as well. And the guy that sent me this has put that in himself, so he'll be able to get a new backlight and stick it in. I mean, they're not expensive. I'm not going to fart around and try and fix it for the sake of whatever they're worth, five, six dollars or something. I don't know. It's just not worth the time. But if you've got a $50 radio, then it's worth spending 10, 15 minutes to fix it if it breaks. That's what we've done. If you've got any questions, any comments, put them on the bottom of this video. If you'd like to see more repair videos, because I've got a pile of stuff here that people have sent me to repair and I don't charge them. I just fix it because, you know, it's what you do when you try and support the hobby. So if you want to see more repair videos, that hopefully will be able to help you if you encounter the same problems in, say so on the bottom of this video. Thank you for watching. See you again very soon. And by the way, don't forget to go to poletopolerc.com where the world's largest RC club has already kicked off. You can join up there, become part of a thriving global community. Thanks for watching. See you soon.